Hello, welcome to episode 10 of the Thank You Notes podcast. On this podcast, I'm your host, Travis. I prepare thank you notes. I read them to people that I bring on the show, tell them why I'm thankful for them. In exchange, they tell me someone that they're thankful for by uh, bringing their own thank you note. Uh, 10 episodes. I'm shocked, astonished, in disbelief. I don't know who thought we would have made it this far. It wasn't me. To commemorate episode 10, I've brought on my friend Lindsay Myers. Lindsay was originally a friend of my wife's in high school. She has since become a, a family friend. She's a real estate professional from Plano, Texas. She's had a 20-year career. She's a mother of two. She's an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, and a really, really nice person. So let's get to my talk with Lindsay Myers. Uh, so we just enjoyed a nice meal. Yes. The two families. And this is a postprandial podcast recording. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. So this is the Thank You Notes podcast. Lindsay, are you a Thank You Notes writer? You know, I've been mulling over this question because I knew you were going to ask me. Growing up, yes, avid, because I had to be. <laughs> it was definitely something that we were raised to do. And as I've gotten older, it is something that, well, let me put it this way. I am more of a card writer. So I can't keep it short enough to to fit into a thank you note piece of stationery. It's it's usually a greeting card size, typically on every white space of the card available. So it's like front and back, single space, all, all four, four sides. sides. Yeah, sometimes the front. Yeah. And so that's the difference between a card and a thank you note to you is the the length and the amount. Yeah, and the content. I think that for thank you notes, your typical like showers and gifts, you know, small gifts, whatever, birthday presents, whatnot. It's the standard formula of like, thank you so much for the, I'm going to say roller skates because that's what we gave your daughter. (laughs) That's what I think about. Thanks for the roller skates. Can't wait to try them out. I'll send pictures of my broken arm or, you know, whatever it is. But typically for me, especially in the business that I'm in, I tend to write more of a lengthy card to tell my clients about my gratitude for them and their business to friends who have done big things for us or whatever it is. It's usually a note just saying like, thank you so much. You mean so much to me, of course, all of those things, but goes a lot deeper than just your standard thank you note, I guess would be the best way to say it. You have two children. They're not old enough to write, but what are you going to make them write thank you notes when they grow up or what's your policy going to be? As of right now, my daughter, who's nine, she's learning about, you know, at least making the list of gifts that she receives, who they're from, and getting started on a thank you note list. We have not quite crossed the threshold of writing the notes just yet, which I feel is a personal mom fail on my part. But, you know, she understands the importance of it. And she loves to write cards for people. Um, you know, she usually draws a picture or something like that and hands it to them. We are not super diligent in getting them sent, but she will sit down and make the list of gifts, who they're from, and at least start (laughs) on writing a card or drawing a picture. I feel like that's a pretty good start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's super artistic, so she loves drawing and that I remember this is something that I thought was very endearing about her is that during COVID, when everything was shut down and you know you couldn't go visit anybody in the hospital and whatnot, there are a few assisted living homes near where we live. And we ran into a lady at the grocery store and she actually ran one that was close by and we were just chatting in the aisle and Aston spoke up and she's like, I love drawing pictures. Could I draw some Christmas cards for some of your, I think she called them for some of your grandparents. And it was so cute. And, you know, she was like six or seven at the time and it was just precious. So we went home and she ripped out pages from every coloring book she had, (laughs) found every scrap piece of paper she could find and was just coloring and drawing and like writing Merry Christmas on everything. And she made Travis seriously in probably the span of an hour. We probably had 50 sheets and she wanted to go take them to these facilities because she knew even at her young age that 
people were going to be lonely and not be able to see their families and all of that. Of course, then there was navigating actually getting them to the residence. But that was something that I was super proud of her for just knowing needed to be done. I thought that was really cool. Any idea where she got it from? I mean, I would love to say me, but I honestly like it was so out of left field when it came out of her little mouth. I would it, it just blew me away. Like very proud. Uh, you did say that you know you write you know a thank you card, a thank you note plus extra credit. So maybe this did come from you. Uh, maybe, maybe, but I don't think she's ever seen me do it or like heard me read anything to anybody. You know, I, I honestly have no idea. So I've never been the recipient of like an, an anonymous thank you note, kind of like these rest home people where, you know, they, they send them to soldiers and things. What what do you think the attitude of people getting these is? It Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think if it were me, I would just be beside myself with excitement that somebody out there was thinking of me, you know, because the world we're living in right now, nobody's thinking about, it seems like nobody's thinking about other people. True. <laughs> The the most recent example I can think of is coming here to meet y'all for dinner and being stuck in traffic on right down the road and everyone's trying to get somewhere. There there was not a whole lot of courtesy on the road. To me, it just I was kind of thinking about it because I knew we were coming here to to record this and thinking about like gratitude and thinking about other people ahead of myself. That was something that stuck out to me because it, it's very rare that somebody would visibly step back and let someone else in before themselves when everybody's in such a rush in life. Right. You know. And what does it say that a six-year-old is uh, showing us all up and doing things for other people? It's very convicting. Very convicting. <laughs> like It just makes you sit there and think like, okay, I don't remember outwardly saying to her or instructing her to do this or even recalling anything that she's watched or listened to it came from somewhere and i just think you know she's just the best person that we know i mean and dan and my husband will tell you that too like she is the best person most kind-hearted genuine loving little human so i think that in the chaos of life and growing up and like kind of maybe being hardened to the innocence of childhood as a child you don't know what's really going on, right? So I think it might be easier for a child to just be like, oh, yeah, that person needs help. Or, oh, yeah, that person needs to be cheered up. Or, oh, yeah, I love that guy. You know, there's no outside influence into how they feel otherwise. Yeah, I think they have the luxury of not having run into a bunch of a-holes along the way and having it beaten out of them. But it you know, Violet's only three, but I do also find myself learning these kinds of things from her and that she's so kind and that she thinks about her friends and thinks about other people. And it's so pure. And you're like, where did I turn a corner on this? Like, because I feel like yes. as a human being with a heart and a conscience, <laughs> you know, we all want to be that. We all want to be a three-year-old little girl that just sees the world through you know, rose colored glasses, like there's nothing, there are no cares in the world. There's nothing wrong. The biggest problem in your life is what snack am I eating today? You know, (laughs) like which sunglasses am I choosing today? And I think that that is a huge deal, especially like for me, seeing my daughter just be that way and growing up, I've watched her grow up now. I can't believe she's nine. It blows my mind. (laughs) I'm old enough to have a nine-year-old. That's weird. But just watching her grow through the years and just watch her develop into this amazing, pure-hearted person, like it just makes me want to be a better mom and a better friend and a better wife and a better human all around. Yeah. And I get the sense of it it kind of puts me on my back foot it's like well if you've already got this down like what what the hell else do i have to teach you like and i you know like i said i don't really want to screw this up (laughs) i have thought that as well like how but how do you shepherd that you know like how do you guide her as she grows into those teenage years where things change and perspectives on life change and how do you pour into that little person to just nurture that and and keep them 
humble and kind and sweet and all of that. And it's difficult because, you know, I'm getting to that point where she's, you know, she's not perfect. (laughs) She throws a little sass here and there. And sometimes I have to be like, okay, you can feel your feelings, but you're going to be respectful. (laughs) You know, we still have to kind of redirect the conversation sometimes. Being able to visibly see in the midst of all the things that have happened in our lives, it's just really important to just, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's just really important to be able to to guide and nurture that in your child. And nobody's going to get it right. You know, I say that it sounds great and wonderful, but it's easier said than done. You just try to screw them up as little as possible. Exactly. You had the distinct honor of being the number one in a Thank You Notes podcast Instagram fan. <laughs> so the day I made the account for the Instagram, I get a notification that somebody's already following you and it was you. <laughs> How did you scoop at, scoop the world in becoming the number one fan? Okay. So this was right after Violet's birthday. That sounds about right. Yeah. It, it had to be because I was so proud of my gift that I got her because I grew up with those same roller skates and I was so pumped when I saw them at the store. I was like, she's getting these for sure. And I was so excited to give them to her. And then probably I would say easy within 48 hours that thank you note was in my mailbox and I opened it up and I was like, man, this is top three best thank you notes I've ever gotten. Whoa. Because that's how many you've written me. All three of them. Are you are from you top three? And I was like, it's such a feel good thing to get a thank you card from Travis in your mailbox. Like in the midst of all the ad coupons and the junk mail and the bills, you get a, a handwritten note and it just changes your day. The minute I read it, I texted Amelia and I was like, okay, Travis, <laughs> Travis needs to start a business where he teaches people how to write a thank you, a proper thank you card. I'm not even joking. I know he's a busy guy. He's got a real job, but something needs to happen. That's all. I was like, I'll take the class. I need to. And she goes, well, actually, (laughs) he's starting a podcast. She didn't say, well, actually, the way she responded, I thought she was joking because we kind of banter like that. And she's like, well, he's starting a podcast in the closet (laughs) called Thank You Notes. And I was like, ha ha, that's hilarious. And she goes, no, seriously, his first episode is about to be is about to drop. And I was like, oh, I'm following that. I'm going to listen to that. I mean, I seriously thought she was joking. But I was so excited to find out that she was not. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I didn't. I'm honored to be in the top three, Lindsay. Thank uh, handwritten. Is it handwritten notes or thank you notes? Well, the only ones you've written me are handwritten. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, both. Yeah, I, I'm honored to to uh, hold that title. It's an idea I was kicking around for a long time, and I n- never really thought about monetizing it. I just thought it'd be a fun premise for a podcast. Well, you are in real estate. And so I wanted to ask you, why did you go into that in the first place? Well, I've had many maternal influences in my life. And one of those is actually the person that I was looking up to in a time in my life that was not so ideal. She just, without, I don't even want to go into the backstory, but basically she and I both grew up very similarly. Obviously she's much older than I am, but you know, our family situations in our childhood were very similar. And I saw how she was able to kind of come from nothing and turn it into something. And that something is absolutely amazing. She's got a real estate empire. She is just an all around amazing human being. I saw her start her real estate business back in the early 90s. Like, I know what the situation was. And I know that she had to do something. And she was rookie of the year her first year in real estate, she was top ranking in her company every year since then. And she's been in the business over 30 years now. And so part of that is her daughter is one of my best friends. So I witnessed it firsthand. And, you know, growing up, I watched her. (laughs) She had this printer in her bedroom and it was the dot matrix one where you had to rip the things off the sides. And it was when the MLS was in a notebook and you're using a maps go to find out where these listings are. I mean, she was grinding every day. 
and built this business into what it is now. And I saw that and I was like, I I could do that. I want to be like that because if she can do it, so can I. And she surrounded herself with friends and other professionals in the industry that are uplifting and encouraging and good people. And, you know, she joined Ebby Halliday. She's always been with Ebby. Ebby was one of her dearest friends and really ingrained a lot of good things into her business as far as gratitude being the very first thing. You know, it's a service business. It's not a sales business doing the right thing, doing stuff for other people. I mean, just everything that she was about, I was like, I want to be about that. Fast forward 2008, when the market tanked, (laughs) I did the cell phone circuit, as I call it. I worked for every cell phone carrier on the face of the planet, I think. This man came into the store I was working in and and I asked him if he wanted to set up a couple of business lines for his company and what he did and all of that. He's like, well, actually, I own the building that you're standing in right now. And if you're interested in making a change, give me a call. And he handed me his card. He was a commercial real estate guy. And so I quit my job and went to work for him. And it didn't work out. (laughs) Um, But that was right at the beginning of the market crash. And so everybody was laying people off anyway. So I lost that job very quickly and then decided, well, if I'm going to get into real estate for real, now's the time because nothing's happening. I can take the classes. I can kind of sit in the office and learn from the people that have already been in the business for a while and just see how that goes. You know, I grew up in Plano, but I was living in the Rockwall area at the time and I knew zero people. I knew nobody. I had no friends out there. I I obviously didn't have any clients. So I joined a brokerage out there and just kind of hung out with some of the agents there. And I, I sold one house and I got one lease signed in one year. But in that process, I had reached out to uh, Paulette and I said, hey, can I come work for you? And she goes, honey, you got to be in real estate for a year before I can hire you. And I was like, okay. I think I can do that. And so that's what I did. I spent the first year of my real estate career in Rockwall kind of scraping by. I wasn't, I knew going in that it wasn't going to be a moneymaker. I knew that. I just wanted the, the education, I guess. And so a year later, I went to work for her and she literally made up a job for me. Like I was not selling houses. (laughs) I was running signs to listings and I was picking them up and I had just gotten a new car and I was so proud of it. But those signs were just a little bit longer than the length of my backseat. (laughs) Within a week or two, I had holes all in the side of my doors and stuff. But anyway, I, I worked with her for about 10 years and from that being a listing coordinator. And so I was working with all the sellers and making sure that their showings were set up and they got their feedback and the houses were staged. Everything was okay there. And then eventually the person that was doing all the contracts for her decided it was time to move on. And she asked me to fill that position. And it was scary because contracts are a big deal in real estate. You know, if you miss something, it could be a big problem. And so I was very nervous and I had just had Aston. It was a huge leap of faith. And she was like, don't worry, I'm not going to let you fail in this. Like, I've got your back. It's going to be great. And it was. And I I stayed in that job for a long time. Yeah, I was in that position for about seven years. At the end of 2019, towards the end, I got remarried and decided that was the time to kind of just start things over and move on from that position, which was bittersweet because it was such an integral part of my life and really shaped me as a grown-up professional person, you know, and I learned so much from her. And so it it allowed me to kind of catapult into this. It's actually funny because the, the business that I'm running now was just supposed to be like a side hustle until I figured out what I actually wanted to do. And within two months, I had a number of clients. I was busy. I had somebody calling me asking if she could come work for me. I just said, well, you know, not quite yet. But within six months, I called her back and I was like, I need your help. <laughs> her name is Leslie and she's been with me since uh, mid 2020. I get my years confused. I don't even know what year it is anymore. It's so crazy. I thought you were leaving the Paulette agency and just to start your own thing. I didn't realize that that was just a side gig. Yeah. Like just kind of a hobby. Yeah. I always thought that was like, this is what I want to do. And this is going to be like the job I've created for myself. 
it honestly, you know what, when I thought I was going to have a career, I wanted to be a, an attorney. <laughs> Realtor, real estate business was never on my radar. It was either lawyer or ballerina. And clearly, I didn't have the body for ballet. So, <laughs> but you know, doing contracts kind of translates into law a little bit, but it kind of scratched that itch, you know, like reading the contracts and knowing the ins and outs and how to explain them to people and, and help them understand what they're getting into because it's such a big deal when you're signing that right. contract that's a binding right. document. So, so explain the new gig for it, it. You just deal with the contract portion of real estate, right? Yeah. So starting out, it's a contract to close transaction coordinating service that we offer. It's flat feeds virtual but kind of the reason behind it is because when I was working for Paulette I can't tell you how many agents I would be speaking with and they would say man I wish we could afford to have somebody like you but we just can't you know pay somebody full time to do this and I'm like man there's got to be a solution for that and then the more I looked at it the more I realized okay there are people out there that there are some brokers that have on staff transaction coordinators they don't you know they don't do a whole lot but with my experience with Paulette and seeing so much action throughout the years I was able to kind of come up with a structure of things that I could do at a flat fee that's reasonable for an agent who maybe does one or two deals a month or maybe even less. You know, it's it's a drop in the bucket compared to paying somebody a full-time salary. So that that was something I saw a need for and but like I said, at the beginning that's all it was. I was going to say, you know, I was going to tell these agents like, "Hey, if you need me to help you with your contract, I'll do it for you whenever you need help." And then it just sort of evolved into its own thing. And so now we do focus mainly on contract to close. Um, so the agents will send us their contracts once they're executed. Of course, the agents will negotiate all the stuff, but we're back there making sure the lenders are on track and the title is doing what they're supposed to do and that everybody is following the contract, everybody's compliant, that there aren't any issues. So is this commercial and residential or just one? Just residential. Okay. Yeah, just residential for now. I have th I have two other ladies that work with me. So we're a well-rounded group. There's knowledge there. So if, if we have an agent that comes on and they're like, oh, we use this program, one of us knows that program. So they're all a little different. But we do offer listing services and we're getting ready to start offering more of a virtual assistant and also coaching so that's that's in the works, but not quite yet. So if you were to rewind, let's say like four or five years before you started this business, was it harder than you thought it would be or was it easier? What did you think it was going to be this difficult and it was more difficult or? You mean as far as starting the business? Yes. Well, I wasn't expecting to start a business, <laughs> but having watched my husband start a business and so I watched him build and grow his handyman business and just saw what worked for him and what did not. And then also combine that with my knowledge of, you know, how Paulette ran her business and the values that she had and that were very non-negotiable values and just sort of combine them. I don't think it was hard. I think it was a very unexpected explosion of, okay, now I own a business and now I'm running one. I know how to do it. It just happened. I think the growth piece was the hardest and continues to be the hardest part for me just because I am not, I'm not super great on social media. I'm more of a behind the scenes social media person. I'll look at people's stuff and like it, but I don't really interact too much. And I know I need to be better about that. Well, it sounds like all your growth is coming word of mouth. Okay. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can say that, you know, my first client actually is funny. We worked together in Paulette's group <laughs> for, for many, we got hired with her at the same time. She moved on before I did and started her own group. And uh, she was like, well, you know, I need your help. And I know that you know how I run my business because we were cut from the same cloth. And so that was a seamless deal right there. And then from there, yeah, it was, it was all word of mouth. And now, yeah, I, I can't think of one client that we have right now that was not actually. So yeah, that's a fair statement. Word of mouth. <laughs> All right, Lindsay, I have written you a thank you note. I guess this is number four. Oh, I'm so excited. And I had to write it down in a rush and I accidentally did it uh, upside down. 
Oh, that's that makes it even more special. Uh, dear Lindsay, thank you for being the first fan. It was a thrill for me to get that support from you from the get-go. I also wanted to thank you for everything you did for me and Amelia during the birth of our daughter. You and Daniel were amazing to us by staying in our place and filling the freezer with homemade meals. We are eternally grateful. We hope to keep you and Daniel and Aston and baby Griffin in our lives as long as you'll have us. Thank you, Travis. That is so sweet. So I wrote a thank you note, too. To hope so, because that's the format of the show. <laughs> but it has nothing to do with what we just talked about. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So we talked a lot about parenting and maternal things and mothers and, you know, Paulette being one of those figures in my life. But this note that I wrote is for probably my first second mom in my life. Uh, we grew up in a, in a neighborhood actually not far from where your parents live. This family moved in right around the same time. They had three kids. It was me and my sister were all around the same age, but we spent almost every waking moment in their house. Like I, I think we lived at their house more than we lived at our own. Their mom, her name is, we call her Mrs. Guest. She was so important in, or she is, she's still around. You know, she taught us so much. They had this huge backyard and she loved to garden but she didn't like pulling the weeds. So with five kids, she said, get out there, pull all the weeds. So we learned how to pull weeds. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And we were all nuts. But she always made holidays so important. When I knew that we were going to be doing this, I really sat down and I was thinking about her. And like this time of year in, in particular, she had all these ornaments that were sterling silver and so we would all line up in the kitchen and we would polish these ornaments and then we would make cookies. And her favorite thing to do was to host a Christmas Eve dinner and it was sandwiches and soup. It was nothing fancy, but her favorite thing to make was a chestnut soup, you know, like chestnuts roasting on the open fire. She would go to the store and buy chestnuts and they come in these, I mean, they're in the shell. And the only way to get them off, as far as we knew, was to boil them. And you had to peel them while they were still hot. Otherwise, the shell would harden again. That was our job. We're like peeling them with our little tiny fingers and getting blisters and whatnot. And it was miserable. But now it's like such a standout memory. But I'm getting wordy on this. And I remember her hand embroidering stockings for the kids. She would sew Lauren, her daughter's dress, her Christmas dress every year. And she would make a matching one for her American Girl doll. And like, I just have all these memories of Christmas with them. In addition to that, and, and probably more importantly, she was there and still is there for a lot of us. Like, not just myself and my sister, but there are other friends of ours from school that maybe were going through some things in their own home. And she always welcomed us in and always had a place for us to sleep and was always willing to hand us a $20 bill and say, go put some gas in your car, whatever. And she, to this day, still does it. Not for me, but you know, I know she does for a few others. And it's just so, she's just a lovely person. And I don't get to see her very often, but she did come to our wedding. She came to see Daniel and I get married and she's just so special to me. And <laughs> it was really fun. Uh, not too long ago, probably about six months ago, she sent us some cookies in the mail, <laughs> which is so funny. And it, and it was hilarious because I'm sure probably your dozens of listeners probably won't know what this is, but there is this, I think it's like a pampered chef thing called brown bag cookies, but they're these, they're ceramic cookie molds um, and they're in various shapes and they put them out for holidays and stuff. And she had, I think maybe six or seven of them and she they were like treasures to her they were very important and it's a very arduous process to make these cookies because you can only do one at a time in each mold it was a big deal one year I dropped one of the cookie molds and it shattered and I thought I was going to be in so much trouble. like I was freaking out crying so upset she's like it's fine just replace it and I'm like okay I'm seven. I don't, I don't have any money. I don't know where you got this. Like anyway, so we figured it out and we replaced the cookie mold. And about six months ago, I get a box of cookies 
and the cookie mold that I gave her to replace the one that I broke and, and the recipe card on how to make them. She's like, I want you to teach Aston how to make these. And I was like, man, that's so cool. Because I mean, that was 30 years ago that that happened and she kept it that long. And it was, I don't know, I could go on all night. Mrs. Guest, I've never taken the time to sit down and put my gratitude and love for you in writing. I know I can speak for many, if not all of your kids, that you are truly one of a kind. The memories I have growing up are so very treasured. The lessons and skills I've learned because of you are priceless, and I cannot wait to share them with my own children. As we approach the holiday season, I'm reminded of all the boiled chestnuts we peeled for that darn soup. The cookie mold's broken. You taking five of us crazy kids into the Hallmark store to buy more pieces for the winter scene decorating Lauren's dollhouse and you painstakingly sewing matching dresses for Lauren and her doll, polishing the silver ornaments and admiring your extensive collection of ballerina ornaments. The list goes on. You truly have helped shape me into the mother I am and your continued love and support of me and my sister and countless others is one of the greatest treasures of my life. Thank you for being my second mom for letting us learn from you and giving an amazing example to emulate (laughs) most of all thank you for letting us be kids i love you so much and i can't wait to see you again soon all my love Lindsay. very nice let me see so this is like a three-page thing oh yeah it it covers all and so we've come full circle here on the podcast yeah we started out talking about the thank you card (laughs) and here we are with a thank you card did i actually say thank you in that card though I think you did. did I just express gratitude? End. Okay. <laughs> I think you did it. That, was, that, that yeah. was nice. She sounds like a wonderful woman. Oh, she's fantastic. And she's still in Plano, same place? No, she actually moved to Iowa. So it's very rare that we get to see her, usually about once a year. But she she and my mom stay in touch and they they talk a lot. and So there's always communication there all right so last question what's baby griffin getting for christmas oh man i feel like a kid in a candy shop with him because aston only wanted books and she didn't care about anything else i want to get him i I think he's still too young i think he's too young for a train set we should we should probably say this for people that don't know baby griffin is what a year year and and how many months months? Mm -hmm. year and two months but anyway All that to say, he's really into trucks and cars. Anything with wheels. We'll probably get him one of those little cozy coupe things or a wagon or something like that. Yeah, Yeah. you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, he's he's got so many trucks already. He might need a life-size one now. (laughs) (laughs) One he can actually drive. Power wheels? Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Yeah. We'll probably just stick to that cozy coupe. But I, I think we'll probably get him a jungle gym thing for the backyard, too. Ooh. Yeah. We'll see. All right, Lindsay, thank you for doing this. Thanks. This is a, a live, in-person Thank You Notes podcast. I hope I didn't mess it up. No, you didn't. <laughs> Signing off. Well, that's it. We did it. Double digits. I'm so happy for me. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for America. I'm so happy for a lot of things. Thank you for going on this journey with me, and thank you for Lindsay deciding to stop by and do a live podcast. Her business is called Transaction Method. If you're in the Dallas area or really anywhere and want somebody to look over your real estate contracts, give her a look-see. I'll put the information for her business in the show notes along with Facebook, voicemail, text, Instagram, everything. Please like and subscribe to the page. Please rate us five stars wherever you listen to this. And please join us next time. Thank you for joining us.